Okay, I'd like to call the meeting of the Capital Improvements uh, Commission to order. Um, we've conducted roll call. Uh, please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two of them. Will the people online please mute your lines until uh, there's a question period, and then um, you can unmute and ask your questions. To start out with, uh, we have to approve the uh, minutes from our last meeting. Uh, that uh, was from May 7th of 2019. Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to recommend the approval of the May 7th, 2019 Capital Improvements Commission minutes. Thank you. Is there a second? The chair will second those. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to the Capital Improvements Program for discussion and possible action for 2021 and through 2025. And we'll turn it over to our Administrator, Daryl Hoffland, for a, a explanation and a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the format for my discussion or how I will organize my comments are to really coincide with the budget message that was included in your budget document or in your CIP document. I'm going to start on page 11 of your booklet uh, in case you have uh, the document electronically in, in front of you. Uh, the total uh, recommended uh, five-year CIP for 2021 to 2025 is just shy of $123 million. It's $100 $22,960,056. Uh, on page 12 of your budget message, uh, you'll see by categories over the five years, uh, the changes. Again, that chart is, is kind of hard to read. Uh, page 13 starts to get into a discussion regarding uh, debt-related uh, um, impacts on, on uh, as a result of this five-year CIP. One thing to note on this debt transaction table on page 13 uh, is a total recommended uh, amount of general obligation debt of approximately 21 million. This compares to last year's five-year five-year CIP, approximately 18.6, and the prior approved five-year CIP was. 27 million. Uh, on average, if you average the 21 million, uh, so divide by five, it's roughly 4.2 million per year. Uh, if on this chart of debt transactions, again, it identifies on an annual basis the amount of debt recommended, and then it also identifies the amount of debt paid. Uh, if I add all the debt paid columns up over the five years, it's a little over 18 million. So for the net outstanding debt from existing to the end of 2025, there is an increase of slightly less than $3 million, but it, there is an increase. On page 14 of, of your budget message, uh, again, it compares our outstanding debt to our state limit. Uh, by state law, the city cannot have more than 5% of its overall equalized value. Please note that in the table, uh, there is no identified increase in our tax base. Uh, again, this is a, a very conservative approach. If you were to add our increase in equalized tax, tax, uh, tax base over what we've experienced in the last, say, four or five years, uh, my expectation is the percent of state limit, probably we would see a decrease. But again, because we've held the equalized value static you're seeing just a slight uptick from 24% to roughly 25%. Uh, I also have for those that are viewing uh, online uh, the meeting and for those in attendance uh, physically in, the, in this room, 
the next chart that will go up on the screen is tax levy for projects by fund. Uh, this shows, again, the major tax levy funded portion. Uh, you'll see that uh, it's a roughly the sort of the low uh, number is in 2025 for roughly $880,000. The highest year is in 2022, a little over 930000 uh, And again, all other years, excuse me, there is a lower one, 871000 So there's roughly uh, 50, excuse me, $60,000 spread. Uh, and again, part of the goal of this five-year cap improvement is to try and create more of a leveled approach. So we have so we try and reduce the significant spikes or, de or major uh, decreases in any given year. So uh, all in all, this is a fairly level uh, use of tax levy over the five years. One thing to note, uh, in case I forget, as we're going through the, the in individual spreadsheets, is that for the first time uh, that you've been presented with a five-year CIP, we have a dedicated tax levy assigned for fire. This chart that I have on page 14 actually collapses public safety, both, both police and fire, into the same line item. But when you get into the bigger spreadsheet, you'll notice again for the first time we have a dedicated amount uh, for the fire department. Uh, and looking at this chart, you'll see a fairly consistent street project allocation of property taxes. Also, uh, an, uh, uh, an identical amount for each year for park, forestry, and open space. Uh, again, the goal is as much as possible is to have a unified dollar amount of tax levy. For purposes of identifying what the tax rate impact is, again, using the assumption that we have a consistent equalized value of property tax, a property valuation in the community, what that would translate into over time, you can see that it's, again, fairly flat. From 2021, uh, public safety, street projects, general government, forestry, park forestry and open space, it's roughly 35 cents on the tax rate. Uh, and when we end in 2025, it's 34 cents. So again, no more than a three cent per thousand valuation of taxes is actually being allocated toward capital projects. And we'll discuss a little bit further as to what the number one revenue source is <coughs> to fund capital projects. But again, I know that capital improvements commission members and village board or common council members are very sensitive to, uh, again, the impact on the tax rate itself. Uh, on page 15, uh, page 15 is, uh, it gets into capital improvement planning process. So capital improvements commission members, this is your first of two meetings. We have scheduled a second meeting for you as early as a Monday, uh, May 4th. Um, and then once you make a recommendation, uh, it will be forwarded to the Common Council and they will immediately forward on to the Plan Commission and the Plan Commission will make a recommendation based upon the information that you've presented. And then it will ultimately go back to the Common Council by the end of May for possible final review and, and adoption. On page 16, uh, it identifies the expenditure category. Uh, you'll see that the number one category as far as expenditures by department is the water utility. So roughly $4 of every $10 is being spent on water-related uh, pro capital projects. The second highest is public works, again, substantially street or street-related uh, improvements, uh, some facilities. And then the third largest category is wastewater utility with, with um, over half of the capital costs in this five-year uh, five capital improvement program is solely associated with the uh, relining of the sanitary uh, interceptor pipe running basically uh, the, along the south half of our community at the base of uh, the bluff along the shoreline of Lake Michigan. And then the last two page, and then uh, we also have uh, up on the screen is a summary of the revenues uh, 
um, revenue sources. I will get that up there. One moment, please. Looks like we have a lock uh, on our slides, so we'll get back to you in, in a minute. But on the last two pages of your five-year CIP budget message uh, is the list of all projects that are of $1.2 million or more. Uh, please note that six of the 15 are water utility related. More specifically, it's associated with the raw water improvement uh, project. Uh, the tally for those projects uh, is approximately $33 million for that, uh, again, very significant uh, and costly project. Uh, the project is currently underway in its design phase in 2020. Uh, so uh, again, moving into construction phases uh, and will be completed, my recollection, during the, the five-year 2021-2025 uh, period. Uh, with that, uh, the uh, department heads who have included projects uh, are either in person or are remote. Uh, some of them have put together PowerPoint slides. Uh, others will talk you through. Uh, because you've seen most of the projects in the past, again, those are um, highlighted in either yellow or blue. Uh, those that do not have a shading in the cell, uh, those are new projects. And again, the goal is to have as many uh, yellow and blue as possible. Uh, no doubt, uh, the 2025 is a new column. So in many cases, those are new projects that you have not seen before. You'll notice a few outliers in that uh, we may not have been able to fit uh, based upon new projects of what was adopted a year ago in the 2021 to 2024 columns. And we have a couple outliers where they had to delay a project by a year pushing it into that 2025 column. And that's why, that's why you will see, a, 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 in rare cases, a yellow or a blue shaded project. There will be a couple requested uh, new considerations tonight as you listen to the department's presentation. In some cases, uh, in most cases, it will be uh, updating uh, estimates of projects or it will be associated with new funding sources uh, and with that, uh, and specifically associated with the CARES Act, the newly approved federal legislation associated with funding uh, COVID-19 uh, related initiatives. Uh, and uh, so you'll hear a little bit more about new funding source and result, a slightly more aggressive recommendation regarding some of the projects that are, are already included on your five-year uh, capital improvements uh, spreadsheet. I think first up is going to be Garrett Erickson from the library. Minister Hofflin. Um, the library just has one project on the list today. Uh, in 1974, the library was built, and in, 19, in 2011, we started replacing some of the HVAC system within the library. So uh, in the last few years, we've replaced the air handling plant the chiller and the boilers, and the last piece to complete this process is to replace the uh, controls on in each room. And so right now they're still using the old compressed air technology, so they don't really uh, work very well with the new smart devices that we have installed in the library. Um, so what we're asking today is for $66,278 to replace the old pneumatic uh, air compressed um, controls with digital controls. And so this would actually be the third year of a four year project. Um, I think that's actually it. So it's a fairly simple, straightforward project. Is there any questions? And, and again, Thank you. Garrett, I guess just for the record, uh, your, your final and fourth year is 2022? Yes. And it's a, of a similar, uh, it's of a similar amount, so that will complete uh, your new, really kind of a smart building technology. Correct. Uh, next uh, is uh, David Mink, or Derek Mink, I'm sorry, <laughs> of transit and parking. I've been called worse. <laughs> I apologize. Just for the record, Darrell, are we working off of the revised five-year, or are we working off the original? Uh, if you could explain the the, the, uh, the difference okay. between the two. 
Sure, we'll start with uh, transit first. Um, so for uh, the uh, versions that's in front of you for 2021 through 2025, a large uh, amount of those projects are related to bus replacement, uh, both on the fixed route and on our paratransit service. Uh, there's a couple, uh, actually one uh, isolated uh, capital improvement, and that would be on our transit facility uh, in the year 2023 um, for uh, $200,000. Um, but largely, there are eight fixed route buses um, that are scheduled between 2022 and 2023, and then a couple of city-sponsored uh, paratransit buses, one in 2021 and one in 2025. Um, as City Administrator Hoffland uh, mentioned, uh, CARES Act uh, funds are available. Uh, we are uh, one of the primary beneficiaries of the CARES Act funds, uh, receiving just under $3.5 million in uh, federal uh, aid for transit. Um, and with that uh, stated, I worked with um, City Administrator Hoffland on uh, perhaps rearranging uh, the five-year uh, capital needs plan uh, to take advantage of some of those CARES Act funds uh, sooner than later. Um, what we uh, had uh, come up with was um, basically moving uh, the 2025 uh, project uh, of the one paratransit uh, vehicle, moving that to 2021 and upping the quantity to two. Uh, so we could take advantage of CARES Act funds for that project. And then taking the uh, transit and admin maintenance facility improvement project out of 2023 and also putting that in 2021. Those two projects would be 100% funded through the CARES Act, would not require any local share contribution. Uh, so that would uh, ultimately uh, save the city uh, a few dollars uh, in local share uh, money is about $57,000 uh, between those two projects. Then um, in 2022, uh, we were uh, looking to take advantage of um, a couple funding opportunities. Um, there was a uh, five bus replacement scheduled for 2023. Uh, we were awarded those five buses through the Congestion Mitigation Air Quality Control Grant uh, that was recently awarded last week. So we did get five buses uh, fully, well, 80% funded through that federal program. Um, and the request was to bump them up to 2022 uh, to get them a little bit uh, sooner. And then out of the three buses that were originally scheduled in 2022, one of them has tentatively been awarded to us already through a uh, federal uh, facilities and bus facilities program through WSDOT. Um, and the other two were still awaiting approval on through the VW program. However, those two other buses, as we have talked about, could be funded through CARES Act as well. So um, taking advantage of some of the grants that we've already been awarded and some of the uh, stimulus money that's been awarded, uh, these projects were uh, altered to take advantage of those funding sources and ultimately replace our fleet uh, sooner than later due to the age of the vehicles that are being replaced, currently uh, sitting at 17, 18, and 19 years of age. So um, so our, our transit projects, uh, I guess to, to recap, would be putting all the fixed route buses into 2022, taking advantage of several grants that we've been awarded and possibly some CARES Act funds, and then moving a couple projects to implement them sooner than later into 2021 uh, to take advantage of the CARES Act funds. Thank you, Derek. Are there any questions for Derek? I understand I will be submitting or putting together a, a revised uh, schedule of these projects for your consideration uh, next week, Monday. Is that correct? Uh, yes, as part of the packet uh, that will go out in anticipation of the Monday Capital Improvements Commission, we will already update those spreadsheets. And then I have one project under parking utility, and that is the replacement of our uh, 2006 GMC pickup truck. Uh, this is one of two of our utility pickup trucks that we use uh, on a regular daily basis. Um, so looking at the, the age and the uh, 
limited use of it, uh, we're looking to replace that in 2021 as well. So that's the only project under parking. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Derek. Uh, next for presentation uh, is Eric Bushman, uh, Information Technology. Thank you. So under information technology for 2021, the first project is to upgrade our Microsoft Exchange email server. Um, our current version is 10 years old. And at, towards the end of this year, Microsoft will no longer be providing support for that uh, addition of the server. The next project <clears throat> is the sync redundant internet connection. The sync network is a network a fiber optic network that is shared between the city, the county, and the Sheboygan Area School System. We uh, basically share the expense and any uh, charges that we incur in maintaining the sync network. One of the uh, issues we have right now is that we only have one connection to the internet on that sync ring. The sync ring has a capability to go in both directions, so it can send data both clockwise and counterclockwise. So if there is a cut in the sync ring itself, we can still get to our network servers via the opposite direction. The problem we have with the internet is we only have one lateral or one connection to the internet, so if that gets cut, our internet connectivity will be down. Um, so we're looking for the funding to share between the county school system and the city to build that uh, additional lateral to the um, internet. At our wastewater treatment data center, which is our redundant data center, we need to uh, upgrade the firewalls out there. Um, currently, we don't have firewalls there when we we did City Hall last year. We opted to put two firewalls, so we have redundant firewalls in the City Hall data center. We don't have firewalls at this time in the wastewater treatment facility, so this would just round out that whole strategy we have with keeping uh, the two data centers in sync as far as equipment. And then the last item for 2021 is IBM retirement software acquisition. One of the projects we're actively working on is retirement of our older legacy systems. Um, we basically are putting together a four-year plan in order to accomplish uh, moving software off of that system. We are going to need to uh, purchase new software to, to replace it. Going on to 2022. We are looking to upgrade our Microsoft Office. We are currently on Office 2010. Uh, on 2022, it'll be 12 years old, uh, and Microsoft will no longer support this uh, coming to the end of 2020. We are also looking to uh, create a redundant connection to City Hall, to the SYNC network. <clears throat> Uh, currently, the City Hall has one connection to the sync uh, ring, very similar to the internet connectivity. The issue there is that if that connection were to be cut, the City Hall, the library, the fire station one, the old Social Security building, and the housing authority would lose connection to the network. The remaining buildings or facilities would fail over to the wastewater treatment facility. Um, so it's a fairly important piece that we get that secondary connection to keep um, City Hall, the library, fire station one, social security building, and the housing authority up in the event of a fiber cut. Third request is once again, uh, IBM retirement software acquisition. As I had mentioned, this is a multi-year plan. So as we go through each year, we're identifying what software we want to retire and we'll need to replace it. 2023, we're looking for the IBM retirement software acquisition. 2024, we're looking for asset management software, uh, in particular for DPW. This will help us manage the uh, assets um, that 
uh, DPW has uh, helps reduce the total cost of owning, operating, and servicing these assets. Um, and the, the package we are looking at is from Tyler uh, Technologies, so it will integrate with our existing ERP Munis system. And then in 2025, we are looking for IBM retirement software acquisition. That should be the last year that we're, we will need to uh, be acquiring software. Uh, by the end of 2025, our intent is to have the IBMI retired and be able to shut it down. Um, I'll jump to WSCS or cable TV. We have one request in 2022 for a studio TriCaster replacement. Uh, in 2022, uh, that computer will be five years old, and our Replacement strategy for computers is every five years we upgrade themselves so within that replacement strategy. Any questions? Seeing none, thank you very much for that information, Eric. I guess as a follow-up, I want to note that between the information technology uh, and Basically, the uh, information technology, all of the projects are funded with the existing fund balance. So we're not asking for any new tax uh, levy funding, no additional debt. Again, oftentimes the improvements associated with IT are very short-lived, although we did hear tonight that uh, there are some really critical uh, fiber connections that will have long-lasting uh, longevity. Uh, as opposed to some of the other improvements are shorter term in the form of software uh, improvements. Uh, next on the list is Chris Domagowski, Police Chief. Good evening. Uh, all of the projects um, in the PD's program are related to our vehicle replacement except for one in 2021. The new projects, there's one new project in 2024, which is an unmarked SUV um, that will be nine years old there. So our, as um, I've stated in the past, our vehicle replacement program is based off of replacing our 14 mark squads that are used um, on all three shifts every four years. And then all the other vehicles are on a 10 year replacement plan. And then the three new projects for 2025 are one marked SUV, one unmarked SUV, and then three unmarked vehicles that will be, um, two of them will be 10 years old and one will be 11 years old. So those are all of the new projects. Then the projects for 2021, just to go over them again, um, there's 77,000, that's for replacement of 24 computers in the squads. The computers are currently five years old. That's a project that was pushed back. So those computers are currently at end of life and need to be replaced next year. Then there's also one marked SUV vehicle um, and then three unmarked vehicles. Does anybody have any further questions about our program? Seeing none, thank you very much. Uh, next is uh, Fire Chief Eric Montiano. Good evening. So uh, <clears throat> there's a about three new items per year, or excuse me, three items per year uh, through 2025. We did move some from uh, a 2022 budget over to the 2025 year. But as you can see, uh, as we begin our uh, PowerPoint here, the biggest item that we have is for 2021 is the 750,000 uh, request to replace our 1998 uh, uh, Quantum Pierce aerial truck. And this is uh, roughly about 14,000 uh, um, annual in the past five years on maintenance. Right now it gets an annual uh, ladder test, which it failed. So currently it is out of service as far as the ladder. So if we needed to use it, 
as a reserve unit right now. All we can do is use it as an engine. Um, so there's a potential savings of about 500,000 to replace it with an engine, which is what we're trying to do. And the uh, second item for 2021 was the first phase of a three phase uh, maintenance mechanical uh, uh, work being done on our headquarters station, station three, which uh, would go to, um, currently we've, uh, several items. These are just some of the points. I mean, there's several different items that are on there. However, uh, we're replacing our emergency generator, which is original to the 1971 building when it was built. Uh, the first floor furnace needs to be replaced, as well as uh, some of the condensing units. It, ha it currently doesn't have a fire alarm system, so we'd have to update that and install a fire alarm system to bring it up to code. Uh, temporary walls uh, need to re be repaired, and as you can see in this next picture, uh, there is uh, plenty of, whoops, excuse me, there's plenty of cracks throughout the whole exterior of the building which are causing leaks throughout that have to be resealed or repaired. The final item in the 2021 is the purchase of extrication tools. And currently the picture you have in front of you is the uh, current model that we have, what we call our hydraulic. Hearst tools, extrication tools, and uh, by it's becoming more and more difficult to find parts for these. <coughs> Manufacturers are going away from them, so when we're uh, currently we're spending uh, quite a bit to maintain them, and, and it's getting difficult to find parts. So we'd like to go to a new system, which we call the E-Tools, which creates a safer work environment, obviously lower maintenance, co maintenance costs because they're new, less storage space in our vehicles, and it's a safer uh, environment and easily deployed. The next item uh, for the 2020, the first item in the 2022 uh, year would be the ambulance purchase. And currently our chassis are 20, they were refurbished in 2016, uh, and they were original to the 20, uh, 2008 which is our patient compartment, which is that square box behind the driver and passenger compartment. Uh, it's a 2008, and currently we're spending over 2,500 on, on an annual basis on maintenance. Uh, the interior of the patient compartment has rips in the, the uh, vinyl, the cushions, the stretchers, the cabinets are falling apart. Uh, the ambulance is our, our most used piece of equipment, and uh, so we would need to uh, replace them. And what I'm trying to do is get them on a rotation so we don't purchase three ambulances all in one year, which will obviously save money. And, and you truly don't want to purchase three of the same type of vehicles when we use them this much. So we're trying to spread it out, and you'll see later on in the presentation. The second item in the 2022 is that's phase two of our station three work. So uh, again, the building's over 51 years old. Uh, we're gonna be repairing uh, some counter flashing with this, uh, rebuilding some of the corner facade on this, in the roof because uh, the brick's falling apart. Uh, sewage ejector controls are gonna be replaced, window sealant, uh, and some exhaust fans are the major uh, items being done in 2022. The final item would be a uh, purchase of a SCBA filling station. And SCBA is our self-contained breathing apparatus. So obviously when we use these in hazardous environments, we have to refill our, our oxygen or our air tanks. So uh, it, this, this model here is 20 years old. It's got over 550 hours of operating time, which the manufacturers and the repairmen say they usually don't make it to the 600 to 700 hour mark. Uh, so it's time to get get it replaced and currently I don't know if you could see on the picture But this one's leaking oil and we they can't repair it So we have uh, cardboard underneath that we have to replace all the time because of the oil leak And uh, in 2023 uh, the fire station phase three uh, will be uh, done, and I know it's a large item, but the, the roof will be replaced in this. That's the biggest uh, cost right there, the entire roof of the main building, which I, I mentioned is leaking. It's uh, causing issues interior in the walls. So we're also going to be doing some basement remodel or a basement furnace replacement, excuse me, uh, sealing some more cracks, 
and then removing that abandoned heating plant, uh, which is original to the building, and that's uh, difficult to take out. Currently, it's on our uh, third floor. In 2023, the ambulance, uh, second ambulance uh, replacement would be uh, in order. And again, as I mentioned in the first one, it's the same thing. It's a 2008 box. So there's issues with that, the compartment, uh, patient compartment box. So uh, we'd like to get that on the rotation. Uh, the first item in the, uh, or excuse me, the last item in the 2023 would be the rescue airbag system. And these are used for uh, extrication. Uh, if somebody's trapped underneath a, a vehicle, we can lift those vehicles up. It's also used in machinery in case we can't uh, get the, the individual out so we can spread, it, spread the, the machinery apart. These are over 23 years old. Uh, and they're not, uh, if by purchasing and replacing them, we'll bring them up to current safety standards. In 2024, the first item would be the third ambulance replacement. Uh, so again, this would spread out our ambulances, so we don't need to uh, purchase three in one year, which would be more expensive. The uh, second item in 2024 would be our replacements of our ca cardiac monitors. And these are, besides our ambulance stretchers, the second most uh, used piece of equipment uh, in the ambulances. And it's nearing its end of life at the time. Uh, it's about um, nine years old, typically replaced around the seven to eight year mark, uh, or you know, if depending on the technology, you might be able to stretch it to 10, uh, but it's time to replace them. And, and the reason we have to replace five is you don't want, a different type of model and technology on one ambulance and then have a different one on another one in case you're going on that ambulance and now buttons are different, things are different on it, it doesn't do the same thing, it's not uh, conducive to our uh, needs when dealing with patients. Uh, the final item in 2024 would be the purchase, uh, this one's a new one, of uh, the fire training simulator. And currently, we, we don't have the ability often to have live burns for our members. And we have a lot of, our department is really young at this time. Um, we got a lot of new guys, newer members. The live fire scenarios, uh, fortunately for all of us, the houses aren't, and buildings aren't burning like they used to. Uh, that's good. However, that's, that's bad when it comes to our staff because the training and then the scenarios aren't there. So this would allow us to have the ability to um, simulate live fires without having to burn buildings. In fact, uh, the one that was just those buildings that we trained on um, over by the Craft 30 building, those two houses, uh, we could have used them in there and it caused no damage uh, exterior or interiorly with the uh, fire or smoke because this is all simulated. Uh, we do have theater smoke that we would use that, but they can actually flow water, hit that fire, and it would actually, the screen would move down. It's a big kind of like a, as large as this TV, but it's, it's made to hit water or you can use other materials for it. So it's very, very good for us. The first item in the 2025 would be the replacement of our rescue pumper. And this one is a 1998 Pierce Saber. And uh, it is currently uh, 20, well, in 2025, it will be 27 years old. And FBA standards recommend a frontline vehicle service for uh, 10 years, and then you put it in reserve for five years. So we're well past that. Um, maintenance costs are between five to ten thousand dollars annually, which, if we were to sell this vehicle right now, it, you wouldn't even. You probably get twenty thousand if we're lucky, give or take. Um, so obviously, we're we're putting more into it than it's worth. Uh, so. It is currently in our reserve status. The, uh, this one's a new one, the turnout gear rack. Um, as you can see in the picture here, our gear racks were original uh, to the buildings. We have, uh, this one was station three. Um, it's obviously 1971 when the station was built. So it's, it's really old. The bottoms are uh, that had to, having to be repaired where you see those, the turnout gear, the boots on the bottom rack there. Uh, we're sh currently sharing two firefighters per 
gear re to <clears throat> slot, and, and usually you shouldn't because you want your gear to dry. If I just uh, had mine at an incident, I have fire on it, uh, you know, smoke, uh, and also I put it in the gear rack, and now I'm contaminating my partner's gear that's also in the same. What we try to do is use different shifts, so you, the two guys on the same, you know, shifts aren't using or sharing the same uh, box. And uh, the final thing on the 2025 was the uh, we moved the training tower, which is uh, what we're going to be working on, trying to get donations and working with potential partnerships to get this complex built. Uh, I'm also, we're having conversations with the police department as well as public works to see if we could make it a, a shared facility, a larger shared facility that would have a classroom capability. So I thank you. And uh, anybody have any questions? Are there any questions for the chief? Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I do want to mention that uh, as uh, Fire Chief Montiano uh, discussed the first ambulance, uh, it is, let me find it, Uh, it is uh, 2022. Uh, your spreadsheet has a dollar amount of 336,000. It should be 356. So that $20,000 spread is, is coincidentally the resale value, and that resulted in confusion. And, uh, and again, unfortunately, the, the correct number was not uh, entered. It should be 356. So uh, the spreadsheets that you receive uh, by Friday will have that revised dollar amount. Uh, next for presentation is Chad Pelishek, uh, Director of City Development. Okay, if you can hopefully hear me, I am working from home, but um, for the Department of City Development, we really only have one new, pro one new project, and that would be what's called the Sheboygan River West Side Boardwalk. So as part of the master plan for the River Bend neighborhood that was completed and adopted by the council late last year. This is the area primarily around the Mayline property. There is a developer that has purchased or has an offer to purchase the former Mayline and redevelop that into some senior housing. And as part of the master plan, we had outlined the idea um, of an extension of a river walk, basically from the Susha's Bar North to ultimately connect into the trail, the Shoreline 400 trail, so that people could have access to the waterfront. We don't know if this project is going to be a city-funded project or if this project is going to be um, a developer-funded, but at any rate, um, we have put in $50,000 uh, for design, uh, preliminary design and layout costs in 2021, and then a million in 2022 for the construction. Um, if this is e this is either like I said, developer or will assist the developer um, in those project costs, we, that's yet to be determined as they're still working through the plan. The other project is the uh, other change of the project is last year there was a uh, Indiana Avenue Trail project for the Union Pacific right away phase one. It was about a 1.2 million dollar project. Um, we're still negotiating with the railroad on the actual price, but it's looking like it's somewhere in the ballpark of 875000 to a million. So we'll see a little bit of savings there, given that we've had a couple hangups from the right, uh, railroad on the negotiation that was originally a 2020 project has now been pushed to a 2021 project. Um, that project will be uh, funded with uh, TIF dollars as well as the Riverbend neighborhood, the Riverbend boardwalk project I just talked about, that'll be TIF as well. Um, and then the construction for the Indiana Avenue is pushed out to um, the 2024 timeline. Otherwise, everything else on there for the projects to the tune of 8.4 million are all existing uh, projects that had been on the books last year. So that's what I have. If anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Are there any questions for Chad? 
Hearing none, Daryl. Uh, next up for presentation is uh, David Beeble, Director of Public Works. Uh, his presentation will also include discussion of the wastewater utility. Um, thank you, Daryl, and thank you, commissioners, for your time and efforts this evening. Um, as you know, Public Works, we, we have quite a, quite a bit of projects to go through, so I, I will focus on many of the new ones that um, maybe, you know, that are in your packet, but I will also highlight definitely for the 2021. So I'm assuming all the commissioners have the capital improvements program, I'm going to be focusing mainly on the spreadsheets, the spreadsheets numbered one through 10. And again, um, you know, the Department of Public Works main mission is uh, to provide the quality infrastructure for the city and, and a lot of our mission and goals and objectives align also with the city strategic plan as well as the rating criteria that you as commissioners will be using to rank these projects. Criteria such as quality of life, infrastructure and public facilities, economic development, neighborhood revitalization, governing and fiscal management, as well as communication. <coughs> With that, uh, I'm going to start on page one of the spreadsheet and near the bottom of that page is city buildings. And for the project year 2021, you'll see two, two projects for city buildings. Both are at the Municipal Service Building, which is our main uh, public works facility. The facility is about 55 years old in 2021, and both projects uh, have been indicated as mandatory in your packet, but I do want to, it, it's basically the design as well as construction of the replacement of our generator, electrical generator at the plant. It's, it's uh, original to the service building, uh, and uh, it's, it's run on fuel, fuel oil as a backup to <coughs> diesel. And um, we will, when we replace it, it will be a natural gas fired generator and uh, critical obviously to the operations if, if, if the facility was power. Along the same lines in 2022, again, you'll see these are projects that we've talked about. They're highlighted in blue, previously identified, just shifted in the year. So, and along with the, that, that energy, the generator upgrade, we will need to replace the electrical panel and, and, and controls with that as well. There is a vehicle wash bay that is in, in the facility that's original again. Um, it's undersized for the type of and size of equipment that we operate today. So that will be in 2022. As well as uh, the garage drains. Again, uh, original to the building, somewhat undersized. They, they need to go to the sanitary sewer given the, uh, the greases and the oils that uh, leak from the trucks at times. So uh, in order to get that upgraded, we need to upsize that for better cleaning of the facility. Moving on to the next page, page two of 10 uh, in 2023. Again, another project that we've had is some <coughs> windows uh, at the facility. We, we now have uh, moved our engineering and administrative. My office is now at the service building where uh, years ago we were at City Hall or other facilities. With uh, office personnel, we, we need to create a better office environment. And uh, right now, a lot of the areas are without windows where a lot of the staff is housed. So that would be in 2023. Uh, in 2024, you'll see a new project. It, it's, it's in here. Uh, and, and you'll see it as well throughout, throughout the um, <coughs> capital improvements. It's going to be the American with Disabilities Act improvements throughout the, throughout the community. We, we're going to alternate on an annual basis, 250000 And in fact, it was starts in 2022 for the buildings. So what we've done is we we've, we've <coughs> did a, a complete audit of the entire city, all of our facilities, as well as all of our parks facilities, public facilities in terms of where any public access would be. And we look for deficiencies in terms of ADA standards. And ultimately the report came out with about $2.5 million that are necessary. 
So what we've done is we've put in a pro program in place of around a quarter million dollars on an annual basis to alternate between parks improvements as well as building or public area improvements. We'll provide more details as that program gets developed. Lastly, in 2025, you'll see again the Municipal Service Garage Roof Replacement. That's been a project um, that's been identified for many, many years. Uh, we keep kind of kicking the can down the road because it's a very expensive project. Ultimately, it's over a million dollars. And given where we're at with our annual allocation of funding, uh, as you can imagine, it takes a large chunk of our annual all allocation. So um, ultimately by 2025, the building, the roof was replaced in around 1990, 91. So as you can see, it's, it's well beyond its service life. I'm gonna move on to page three of the spreadsheet and we're gonna to go to traffic control. And in 2021, we have three projects, uh, LED streetlight up, um, upgrades for the TID 17, as well as LED street lighting upgrades citywide. So they will be outside the TID, the TID district and, and out anywhere within the city where we have street lights that need to be converted. Primarily, we're, con we're concentrating on some of our main <coughs> arterials, such as Peter Drive, uh, 14th Street, Calumet Drive, uh, Kohler Memorial Drive has been, been upgraded already. So we're gonna continue along that on the citywide portion. As well as what we, we also have in here is traffic control citywide. And this is just an upgrade of any traffic signal um, that is out of date or needing upgraded. Uh, every year we try to pick one, one intersection and try to upgrade with that for traffic. Again, this, these LED street lighting upgrades, basically converting what I call as the orange high pressure sodium type of light fixture to the bright white LED, a tremendous energy savings as well as uh, higher quality light output as well. And it's been a popular program and as well as it's been saving energy for the, for the city overall. So again, we're continuing that program in 2022 as indicated by the yellow on your spreadsheet. Again, then we go into 2023, street lighting upgrade again, LED, or we also include uh, some traffic control again, picking another intersection. And the same thing is in 2024. And by then, we, we sh we're looking at, we could hopefully be fairly well in place since for 2025, uh, we could have a year where we could shift or allocate resources that have been typically allocated to this program to other programs within the capital improvements program. So at the bottom of three, the sheet, uh, page three of 10 of your, on, your, on your spreadsheet, we're gonna get into probably the biggest and most important uh, aspect is our street network. Every year when the city does our annual survey, community-wide survey, uh, the number one issue in the community is the state, uh, the status, and the quality of our road and street network. Um, as you know, as commissioners, we have made a, a serious concentrated effort on improving our road infrastructure network. Uh, what I will have sent out is... I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but this is a map, and I'm gonna have this included in your Friday update. This is a map of all the road projects that we've completed since 2013, as well as all the next five-year capital improvement projects proposed from 2021 through 2025. And uh, I think it's, it's quite impressive to see what you as commissioners, as well as council members and the community, what we've been able to accomplish by really concentrating on focusing on our road infrastructure and making a difference in our community. So continuing along those thoughts, our streets and many of these, I'm not gonna belabor and go over too many of these as you as commissioners have seen these, we've talked about them and you'll, they're indicated obviously by color. But I have a couple of new ones that we want, want to give you for at least 2021. 
uh, Washington Avenue on the south side of Sheboygan, uh, Highway 28, uh, from South <coughs> Business Drive to Taylor Drive. That section was resurfaced uh, roughly in the late 90s. Uh, it's a very heavily trafficked, uh, traveled road, and uh, we're starting to get some delamination of the asphalt, <coughs> and it's failing. And what we're proposing is just what we call a, a mill and fill. So we would mill off probably three inches of the existing five inches. We're not going to do a full depth uh, mill. We're going to do about three inches and then do two lifts of replacement to provide a better surface for, for traveling. Um, we're doing a tremendous amount of pothole patching in that area. And uh, it's becoming further and further deteriorated. There's some drainage issues and, and water is, is uh, penetrating the pavement, getting underneath it, freezing fine and causing failure. The other one we, we have is, uh, is South Business Drive and, and George Avenue intersection, uh, along with the development project and at the former Vandervard property. There will be signals needed at the intersection of South Business Drive in Georgia, as well as we will be resurfacing Georgia Avenue east of that location to a. We have North Commerce Street as part of the TID district, South 10th Street's included next year. We have, uh, again, as, as administ City Administrator Daryl Hoffman mentioned, you know, we have the mandatory projects that have been indicated on your spreadsheet by M. The ones that really, uh, for 2021, that, that uh, I, I'm very passionate about and want to bring to the commissioner's attention are the next three that have CMAQ, C-M-A-Q. CMAQ is what we call the, the, the term. And what, what these projects are, are traffic signal corridor upgrades. And we received a federal fund uh, federal grant funding for this. The reason that they're not mandatory, even though we've got significant federal funds, is we have to we have to front the money up, um, first. So, in other words, we spend all the money and then we get reimbursed after the project. So it does impact our borrowing, but in the end, out, out of this entire project, for instance, pull the Memorial Drive where it's five hundred eighteen thousand one hundred dollars. Of that, federal and state funds are 400, 14,480. A significant portion is picked up by the federal funding. Same thing with the 14th Street. That is 758,800. Again, federal funding is going to be, and state funding combined, $607,040 is going to be funded, and we will be reimbursed. And lastly, the Taylor Drive. It's 666900 of which 533520000 is picked up and reimbursed, basically, by the feds and, and the state. Uh, so what, what, these, what this project does is it upgrades significantly amount, many of our traffic signals, as well as provide radio computer control technology, as well as camera systems, to monitor flow for better progression and traffic flow. So it, it's, it's real time. It gives the system, monitors traffic. If traffic's flowing more to the north at a certain period of day, it automatically will adjust the traffic signal timing to provide better green, uh, it, green bands, we call them, of traffic flow to reduce congestion and stop start traffic, which ultimately reduces fuel and increases air pollution. And that's the main focus of the federal and state grant is that through this is it's a congestion mitigation air quality grant. They're looking to improve air quality as well as fuel savings with this, with this program. So it's, it's, it's an excellent program and ultimately it will help uh, with our infrastructure by upgrading our traffic signals as well as uh, better enhanced quality of life for the community as well as uh, better traffic uh, progression, which we all know um, can, be, can be frustrating when you're in a hurry if you have to stop too often. Moving on to project, uh, in the project year of 2022. A couple of new ones. Um, again, I'm not going to go over all of these. 
based on time, but we've included St. Clair Avenue from 9th to 14th Street, as well as uh, Calumet Drive um, from, from around, I'd say, Superior Avenue North, as well as Superior Avenue to Erie Avenue, which is technically kind of Calumet Drive, 14th Street. What we're looking to do on that is the concentrated systematic concrete panel replacement. Overall, that pavement is in good condition, but we do have uh, starting to experience what we call a delamination at joints and, and some of the, the, the concrete is starting to fail and, and spoil and pop. So what this process does is it cuts out those bad panels and replaces it with good concrete. Ultimately, extending the life of, of, that, of those uh, pavement networks. <clears throat> Moving on to 2023, uh, one project that is, is somewhat new is the Indiana from South 17th to 24th Street. We, we did apply for a, a grant through the state of Wisconsin for funding on this. We, did, we, were, we were unsuccessful. So in the grant was actually we were going to do a complete reconstruct of that section where we remove all the pavement, such as uh, North Avenue that we just completed. So we would remove everything and then uh, replace it with brand new infrastructure. Since we did not get that grant, what we're looking to do in 2023 is do a, a, a large scale resurfacing program, as well as do some enhancement with some bike lanes. And we're looking at some other technology, potentially of colorized asphalt, or maybe even a separated path as uh, that section of Indiana Avenue is quite wide. Uh, and we could do what is called a road diet, narrow it up, but yet provide a, a dedicated lane for bikes and pedestrians that would ultimately connect with the county section further west. And this is part of a long range goal, ultimately to get it all the way to the east and down to Indiana Corridor and downtown with uh, our other bike paths and, and, and infrastructure network. Again, the rest of the projects in 2023 are, are projects we've talked about and either are consistent with past capital improvements or have shifted based on funding. In 2024, uh, a new project is the Weeding Creek or what we call County EE on the south side. Uh, the county, the county highway department actually is going to lead this project, but we're in partnership with them. We just had actually our, our first scoping meeting today with the DOT as well as the county and uh, us at the city public works department participate in the scoping meeting with that project and it's um, a project that I think we, we are all familiar with in the community and it's long overdue. It, it's going to be converted from a, a rural type section with in its current condition where it's just two lanes with ditches on, this, uh, on each side. We're going to eventually reconstruct this with curb and gutter and put it in as an urban section with, with sidewalks. Uh, a very much welcome improvement on that corridor. And in 2025, again, we're looking at a major project uh, that we had in North 15th Street that would be a total reconstruct. Again, that's subject to uh, ultimately some federal and state funding. It's a five and a half million dollar project. Uh, if, if that does not get funding, it'll probably be shifted out and we will replace it with other, other street projects. Uh, but the other one is we're looking at the, a pretty good reconstruction of the North Point intersection, Barrett, Lincoln, and Broughton Drive. We are looking to do some small-scale <clears throat> types of improvements this summer, but ultimately that could be a, a, a roundabout uh, that could be a smaller <coughs> neighborhood type that could ultimately make that a safer intersection. I'm going to move on to page five of that. And now get into our parks and forestry section. I guess before I move on to parks and forestry, could I uh, ask if there's any questions of streets or projects that I've discussed so far? All right. Yeah, uh, David, David, okay. David. 
just real quick, just to uh, hi highlight, uh, I think in the first year, um, for those of you that have the individual pages uh, in the draft document, you'll notice that some of these projects like Commerce Street, we're able to leverage uh, by proceeding with this project, a new redevelopment of that site. So, but for us proceeding with this Commerce Street as, as an example, we would not be successful in attracting a developer of that mainline site. Again, please note the, uh, the little footnoted number, uh, again, substantially paid by uh, tax incremental district, so the general taxpayers uh, are not incurring any costs associated with that. In essence, the taxes from that new development on the former mainline site, in essence, are, will pay for the costs associated with that improvement. So again, as much as possible, uh, the city tries to leverage, again, these tax incremental districts um, wh where it's appropriate. Thank you. Thank you, Daryl. Good, good, good comments. Um, I'm going to move on to Parks and Forestry, where, again, we're on page 5 of 10. And again, I think you'll see highlighted items <laughs> That I, that I won't belabor and, and discuss too much. So one of the things in 2021 that is new is, is we're going to need to do some start capital repairs at our Maywood Environmental Facility. A wonderful facility, wonderful asset in our community, uh, but, but it, you know, it's starting to show its age and working with the Maywood board and some of their, their, they brought many of these items to our attention and we have since developed a plan and so we're, we're asking for $25,000 in 2021 primarily looking at some siding and some windows where we're starting to get, have some 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 rot and uh, we need to get some repairs and get that fixed also uh, new is the Warner subdivision that, we, that is being proposed and we're looking to do some grading and some parkways that uh, would be associated with that with that with that project and, and lastly is, and, and again, I mentioned this earlier, is the first year that we're going to be looking at around a quarter million dollars for ADA handicap accessibility improvements citywide. And so this, in 2021, we're primarily going to focus on our parks. And again, there's a ranking system, and uh, it's, it's quite detailed. And as it further gets developed, We'll be sharing plans and priorities, as well as when we go to the committees and go for approvals for the plans, as well as design and construction. So there'll be plenty of opportunity to learn more <coughs> about, about this program. Again, $2.5 million dedicated st strictly to handicap accessibility through, throughout, our, throughout our community. In 2022, the new project would be Area 3 at Evergreen Park. Uh, it's a very popular area. And um, with the Emerald Ash Borer, we've lost probably around half a dozen trees in this area where it was shaded in the past. Um, so what we're looking to do is put an open shelter. We're not, this would not be a shelter with full restrooms, uh, as, I'm, as I'm describing. So we're looking for a concrete pad, uh, pole structure with a roof just to provide some shade for for picnic goers um, and this would be oh, oh, you know, oh, it's rented today but because there's no shelter to rent it's kind of a first come first served area so we're looking at probably increasing some rental revenue but we feel that this open shelter will be a very popular popular place then in 2023 a new project that again it would be that eight continuation. It'd be the every other year that we would continue with the ADA improvements. In 2024, the new project that you're, you're looking at uh, is the Veterans Park tennis court resurfacing for a 100,000. And then in 2025, you know, it's, it's a new year, but really the continuation of our urban forestry management plan, as well as our playground renovations is pretty consistent. Again, here you see another 25,000 for Maywood. We're looking to do some more improvements at Maywood, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, and then we're looking at the quarry. By 2025, we're, we're entering into a master 
plan right now. Hopefully by the end of 2020, early 2021, we would have some plans and ideas. And we're thinking by 2025, we would be ready to implement a pretty major project to do some, some renovations and, and enhancements at the quarry. And lastly, again, the eight, it would be the third year of the five year, every other year, ADA improvement. Moving, moving on, uh, we're looking on page six of 10, and now we're at our wastewater utility. These projects are all funded through the user rates that you pay for your sanitary sewer bill. So these don't necessarily hit the general obligation, no borrowing, but they do overall impact the city's overall debt. And um, what we're looking at in 2021, we, we, we have some newer projects that just because of um, looking at where things are happening, they became a priority this past year. So installing an aeration blower, number two, as well as a, a primary influent building HVAC upgrade. The, the aeration blower number two is necessary. The aeration uh, basically provides oxygen to the, to the treated wastewater, um, helping the, the, the process to clean the wastewater. So it's a very important process and uh, it takes a lot of energy and we're looking to get, this, get one of our replacement blowers and basically uh, get it more efficient as well as upgrade. The HVAC upgrade in the primary influent building, this is where the primary sludge comes into the treatment plant. This is the original HVAC equipment. Uh, it's pretty much obsolete and not functioning very well. As a result, uh, all of our maintenance personnel has to have full uh, protective measures in terms of breathing apparatus because of the gases in the area. And um, it's um, a very health and safety critical, critical function piece of equipment that we need to get upgraded. So that's, that's 310,000. Uh, again, now you start seeing some colored again, primary clarifier, secondary clarifier. These are annual, we, we have multiple stages of clarification of the water. So we're looking to do some of these on an <coughs> annual basis and systematically ultimately upgrade all the clarifier drives. The, the big project that you see in 2021, that's, that's not color, and I'm gonna, do up, I'm gonna update this figure for you as I just received an update uh, late Friday from our designers that we're working with. But this is, as, as City Administrator Hoffman mentioned, this is our South Lakeshore Interceptor Sewer. <coughs> This sewer runs from Kentucky Avenue all along the lake shore to the treatment plant. It's about 8,000 feet, almost two, almost two miles away. It's 60 inches in diameter, and it prob probably handles over half of all of the sewage that ends up at the treatment plant. Um, right now, it, it's, it's very close to the water's edge, given the high water, and uh, we're experiencing waves that crash over the top of manholes in this area, and we're concerned. It was it was strengthened back in the 80s, last time we had high water, and we just had a inspection of it. And at this point, the the pipe is in fairly good condition. It was built in 1933, and. Uh, <clears throat> Fortunately for us, the, 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 the structure is in good condition and what we can do is we can line it. We don't have to replace it, but nevertheless, the updated price value on this project is 13.9 million now instead of the eight. And I will have an updated uh, spreadsheet for the commissioners again uh, for you by, for this, by the end of this week on this project with more, more detail on that. Um, but again, it's a very critical piece of infrastructure for our community, and um, we're, we're, we're pleased that <coughs> the condition is that we're able to line it, but yet it's still, it's still a large uh, price tag, as, you, as, as I indicated now, $13.9 million. But as I mentioned, it, it does serve a large, large area and a large volume of our sanitary sewage. 
Moving on to 2022, the only uh, different project that you haven't seen is some screen, screen and scum reject system upgrade. We, we have, right now we have one uh, grinder that takes all of, this, all of the debris that comes into the plant <coughs> at the sewage plant. Um, it, it, it screens it and then it, it pulls it out of the water and then it has to be, to get through the system, it gets ground up into smaller pieces ultimately into a dumpster and this material goes to a landfill. This is not, this is your inorganics. If you can imagine things getting flushed down the toilet um, that don't degrade, uh, plastics. Um, well, I don't have to explain much more. You understand. I'll let you use your mind on that. So that type of material, we have to get out of the water. And so this is a very important piece. We only have one of these and when it breaks down, uh, a lot of this debris then bypasses and gets into, into the water column that uh, we, we don't want. So this would provide a redundant backup, second train, in other words, second line, that if one goes down, we always have one online where we don't have to shut down the system and take it apart and rebuild it. We can do it while the other one is still, still in operation. Uh, 2023 projects at the wastewater treatment plant, uh, they're all in color, and I'm just going to go right to 2024. And in 2024, we have really, it's basically a, a metering system for uh, sewage haulers that come into the plant. So everything is, is computer controlled. So right now, the current system is, is getting um, obsolete. So what this does is haulers have cards and access pin numbers. They're able to come in access to the facility, dump their sewage, it's recorded, it's videoed, they record what it is, and ultimately this system records everything and we're able to then send an invoice and bill according on, on what they've discharged at the plant. So we're looking at roughly $200,000 in upgrades in, in 2024. <clears throat> Basically, we have some tanks for chemicals that will need to be replaced. Uh, that's one of the projects, as well as continuation of our, our sanitary uh, sewer lining program that we have on an annual basis that's very much tied to our road improvement program. So that was wastewater treatment and parks. Before I move on, lastly, to motor vehicle. I guess I'd ask any questions or we good? David? Yes. A uh, question for you. You said it's um, the South <clears throat> Lakeshore Interceptor uh, Sewer re Rehabilitation. It's not $8 million, but was that 13.9? Correct. Uh, 13.9, yeah, 13.9. <clears throat> and I will, I will have an updated spreadsheet for all the commissioners. Uh, on that latest, I, I, again, I got that late Friday, the latest update. We had a meeting with the engineers on Friday, working on it. We got some good news that it's in good shape and the, the existing pump station can be used for bypass pumping, but given its location, uh, it's very difficult to access for any of the lining companies. So we're gonna need to do some significant road building and armoring of uh, work to get access, especially from around High Avenue South, which is probably around 6,000 feet. It's probably some of the most difficult terrain to get at. And um, so there's gonna be quite a bit of work with building this access road as well as getting equipment in this area to do this work. Thank you. Anyone else? So with that, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, David. Okay, I'm going to go to motor vehicle. We're on page 7 of 10. And if you look at this, these are all projects and pieces of equipment that uh, we've had in pr prior years. And they're part of our program that we've systematically tried to keep right around 500000 uh, last year, as you know, we had a large ticket item. We, we just purchased all of our new automated garbage re refuge trucks, and I can state today that they're all in, and we're anxious to get going on that starting Monday. So um, that's 
appreciate everyone's support on that. We're really anxious to get going on that. Therefore, but since then, you know, we, we've been adding a lot to the fleet, and we're in a good position now with the age of our fleet and annually looking at our fleet on a depreciation schedule and a replacement schedule that we've been able to knock this down to roughly right around a half a million. It's a little bit over, but we're going to round down <coughs> to 500,000, half a million. But everything that you see is consistent, either shifted from year to year or it's a piece of equipment that, that we've talked about. Street sweepers, for instance, and dump trucks, uh, pickup trucks, skid steers, uh, and so forth. I guess the, the big one and the only thing that's new, and it's in 2025, and really it's a triaxle dump truck. And our dump trucks should last 15 years is what we're replacing them on. In some cases, our, our vehicles are well beyond the depreciation schedule. Uh, due to our maintenance staff, we've been able to extend the life beyond and keep our, our, our fleet in good working condition. Um, so I don't want to belabor too much on this, but um, we're looking to do around a quarter million dollars from our motor vehicle fund that we, we keep that's offline, that's, that's not borrowed mon money, and we're looking to supplement the other half to 250 with borrowed on an annual basis. So I'd entertain any questions from our motor vehicles. Any comments? Very good. Daryl? The last major category, and I alluded to it at the, at the beginning of my comments, is the water utility related projects. Um, again, these are included in your five year uh, CIP spreadsheet for informational purposes only. As you're aware, uh, the water utility projects are reviewed and approved by the Board of Water Commissioners. So there is an independent review. 100% uh, of their projects are user fee uh, funded. Uh, and as a result, uh, typically there is a special revenue or state uh, uh, loan sources for their projects. Uh, now, I do want to sort of move uh, away from, um, uh, actually, before I, I, I just st start discussing um, the review process, uh, again, if there's any questions regarding any specific uh, projects uh, that were presented tonight, I would uh, try to answer your questions or I will uh, have the respective department heads get back to you. Any questions out there? So if, if not, I'd like to discuss uh, the commission's review uh, process. Uh, historically, the commission has been, has been focused on uh, the city's debt and as a result have has spent a considerable amount of their deliberation or analysis on what the annual general obligation debt to be issued uh, for these related projects. Uh, consistent, again, with past discussions, I put together a, uh, a, a spreadsheet. And again, it should have been part of your packet that you received via email. Uh, it, at the top, it says 2021 capital debt related projects. So what I've done is attempt to identify the total cost of the project the portion of the project that is debt uh, related, uh, and then giving you sort of accumulated general obligation debt total. Uh, in the packet that was sent to you, uh, the top half is basically blue. Blue meaning these are recommended mandated projects that uh, I feel confident that uh, the city, it would be detrimental to the city if these projects did not proceed in 2021. And then the bottom half of the list are, in essence, the remainder of the 2021 only uh, projects that are partially or totally funded by general obligation debt that I do not perceive as being mandated for 2021. And again, with the accumulated general obligation debt, you can see that the mandated projects takes us all the way up to roughly 3.4 million. And again, if you add the bottom half, 
uh, we end up at roughly $4.2 million. Um, in order to assist you as commissioners in reviewing these projects, especially those that are not highlighted in blue or that are not mandated, I provided a separate file in your attachment of rating, of in essence, a rating sheet. Again, uh, all CIP items, whether it's debt funded or, or funded through other means, uh, if it does not uh, advance the city's strategic plan, uh, these are projects that I would not support. So again, we've, uh, at the staff level, uh, and again, department heads have been great about, again, wanting to advance projects consistent with our five-year uh, strategic plan. Um, and so if, if you need to make cuts or need to for further delay, deliberation, uh, these rating sheets are an attempt to come up with an objective mean to review these projects. So again, based upon a point system, and I think this is our third year, uh, your, uh, what is being asked of you is to rate 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 projects. And based upon that, uh, our hope is that you will be able to review those in the next two or three days. Uh, so as part of your probably no later than Friday morning uh, meeting packet for next Monday, we will uh, summarize uh, your ratings and put together your collective average score uh, for these uh, projects that are on the bottom half of this uh, debt-related project sheet. Uh, and again, the, with the hope that it would provide you with additional information so when we get together for your second meeting, uh, you would have the benefit of, of that information. Are there any questions about the rating system? If you care to submit your ratings electronically, please feel comfortable. Uh, we will, I will send you the name of uh, our uh, newly minted uh, assistant to the city administrator, uh, Claudia Stanskis. Uh, she replaces uh, Kiri Ahrens. And so uh, I, we will forward to you uh, her email address uh, so that she can uh, summarize and, and uh, as she uh, begins to assist in developing meeting packet uh, for your second meeting. Any questions on the process? So again, email or if you want to physically drop them off, either way would be great. Uh, if you're going to be dropping off, please let us know. As you, uh, as you may be aware, City Hall is locked, but we can uh, come downstairs and greet you and and uh, take, take those rating sheets. I think that concludes the presentation. Thank you very much to Daryl and all the department heads for the great job they did in, uh, in organizing all the projects in their department. Uh, our next meeting then, we're looking at May 4th at four o'clock, I believe, Daryl. And the item uh, next is adjournment. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Very good. Will uh, all those in favor of adjournment please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you for your time tonight. And if you have any questions, please give Daryl or myself or any of our department heads a call to ask your questions.